Hi, this is Mike Sigula from TrueFury.com and welcome to another episode of True Spirituality. So True Spirituality is my series where I talk about metaphysics, esoteric ideas and teachings, mysticism, shamanism and all sorts of relevant and related topics. So if you like these types of subjects, welcome. If you are new here, welcome. Please subscribe. Have a look at previous episodes because this is episode 60 something already. So we have a lot of content that talks about these types of subjects. And before we gonna get into the topic, quick announcement. If you don't know, I've been working on an online course. I call it Exit the Matrix. It is a comprehensive course that helps people to transform their lives so they become the best version and attract what is good for them. It helps with things like figuring out your purpose, your passion, getting the right relationships, being happy, fulfilled, all sorts of really awesome things. And it's almost ready. I mean, it's ready. <laughs> it's ready, I'm testing. The course is finished and I'm gonna be publishing it soon. But if you haven't heard about it yet, sign up for updates. Go to truefury.com for slash academy or maybe by the time you're gonna watch the video, the course is gonna be live there already. So check out truefury.com for slash academy. And now let's talk about the topic. So what are the consequences, spiritual metaphysical consequences of open relationships, casual intimacy and things like that. Everything has consequences, of course, and we're living in a world where something that it should be considered sacred, like making love, is turned into industry, you know, Tinder, hookups, things like that. It became a thing that completely reversed its original purpose and meaning, right? I'm not gonna judge it here. If you do it, whatever, it's up to you, right? I just wanna give you some information on pros and cons of these types of things. So generally we can say that sexual intercourse is basically to create life, right? And to create bond and have enormous pleasure between the lovers, right? These are the purposes. So what I'm going to share with you comes from not only researching these things, but also my own experiences. So first I want to talk about soul fragmentation. So every time there is an intercourse, the auras of the lovers unite and there is an energy exchange between them. And this creates sexual cords, sometimes called etheric cords, sometimes called soul ties as well, and soul fragmentation, right? So what happens is that part of your field is connected with the field of your partner, and there is a bond. And the more partners you have, the more of these cords you have, right? This is the idea. Now we have these cords also with our mothers because you came from the womb, so you have that connection. So a couple of things. First of all, there is a method called soul retrieval, for example, which apparently tries to cut these cords, right? Because what happens is that if you have these connections, especially the more partners you've had, the more of them you're gonna have, you're gonna affect each other, right? So for example, you might pick some energies from one of your ex-partners. He's gonna be a messy guy, a lot of drama, a lot of mess in his head. Sometimes you're gonna feel moody, whatever. You might be picking that from this partner. Obviously, there are all sorts of things like that, but I know people who are sensitive and who can feel these things and they can pick these types of things from others. So this is one consequence, right? That basically the more partners you had and depends on these partners, how clean they are energetically, that might affect you. And sometimes it's just gonna affect you more, sometimes less. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to connect these things, sometimes not 
gonna be very obvious. So what can be done, there is this method called soul retrieval. I've done it this year actually. So let me tell you a little bit about how it looked for me. So I was doing some other session. This guy was actually doing soul retrieval. He proposed that to me. And we started talking about my past partners, things like that. And uh, he said, okay, I can feel something with your mom. You know, she, she might be affecting you through this, right? What we said, you are connected with your mom as well because you came from the womb, right? Of your mother. And he said, yes, uh, she's like worrying and things like that. And I didn't tell him anything about my mom, right? <laughs> And this is exactly what my mom tends to do. She tends to worry about me, right? I don't know, this is my mom. For, for years she's been doing that. I always tell her, come on, nothing ever happens. But what he explained to me is that because of that, and because we have this connection, this cord, that affects me, right? So when she's worrying about me, that sends me energy, negative energy or something like that. And he didn't know anything about my mom and he hit the nail because that's what she does, right? So he, that's a pretty good indication that he seems to be a decent psychic. So he did the session, it wasn't like very complicated or anything. And I can't really tell you much if it worked or not. All I know that when he finished, my energy level spiked a little bit. So my eyes got cleared, like, you know, I definitely felt like like a little energy spike exactly in the moment when he finished so seems to be working i can't really tell you much about it because there are so many forces that might affect your mood you might be thinking oh maybe this is my ex-partner <laughs> maybe it's something else you know but this is what's what's apparently happening here so this is one thing right soul retrieval soul fragmentation the more of partners you've had the more you are connected with all of these people right and the more you might be picking what's going on in their lives for example so something to think about okay so now second very important thing about the topic the, so the difference between intercourse with someone you love right when there is a bond and true love versus casual intercourse, let's say. What's the difference? First of all, if there is love, what happens is that you love each other, right? You, your heart chakra generates love energy. The partner is polarized in an opposite way. So, you know, male energy is dominant, is plus, female is minus, is receptive. There is an energy exchange, right? Especially when you have orgasm. And when there is love, and that true attraction, this creates an aura around you, right? The, the, the energy of love creates a protection around you, right? You both generate it, right? In such scenario, it is unlikely to have any kind of influences from any kind of external forces, let's say, negative entities or any negative energies when there is the opposite right so casual one night stands open etc just for the sake of pleasure there's no love right so there is no protection and typically that invites negative entities and what happens is that they want to use the person to gain food right it's energy for them right so, how do I know this stuff? <laughs> Let me give you a couple of examples. So, first thing, uh, I'm not gonna say I'm, I was always a good boy. I wasn't a good boy many times in my life. And especially when I was younger, I used to party a lot, do all sorts of stuff like that, and sometimes had one night stands, these types of things. Over the last couple of years, it changed. I became very much aware of these things and started like really respecting myself and uh, you know what I do and things like that but 
10 plus years ago wasn't like that. So what happened was that in 2011, I got into a relationship with my, turned out to be a twin flame. And, and she's very psychic. She's very good psychic. One of the best ones I've seen in my life. So because of that, because of my past, because I used to do a lot of partying, drugs, you know, these types of things and casual. <laughs> that attracts entities, negative entities, this type of behavior, right? So what happened was that in 2011 we were and 12, we were living in a house together with some other people. And there was someone from my family as well, who was also doing similar things. And, you know, she started picking entities from us. She said like we attract them and she's very sensitive. She's a psychic so she can see them. They attack her, things like that. So she couldn't stand around me and the other person. The other person also had, um, you know, issues with drugs at that time. And one time this person overdosed and uh, we came to the bathroom, me and my uh, partner at that time who is a psychic and she said she saw two shadow beings jumping and feeding of him right this is what they feed off they feed off low vibrational stuff basically everything from uh, alcohol drugs to s sexual energy but specific type of sexual energy not every type of sexual energy so sexual energy when it's done through love no stay away from that when it's done through other means yeah so what's happened was that because she's gifted psychically and because of my past she couldn't stay around me and she just left right she she just basically said she she cannot stay in this house i was heartbroken things like that right now what happened was that so we separated and um i don't know we Get back together after like two years or something. I don't remember exactly, but it was like a year and a half of two, or two years. And first time we had an intercourse, first time we were making love, let's say, she said, I saw an entity. Boom. You know, it's almost like, okay, there is food, guys. You know, jump in. I can't really tell you that what I was doing in those two years in between but I wasn't like I would come back to parties and things like that for sure but this is what happens right once you get into let's say you're not clean energetically so alcohol parties drugs casual sex things like that then you become just way more vulnerable to these types of attacks and they start manipulating people so they, they want to because this is energy for them right so you know they might send thoughts to the person person might get addicted some kind of uh, watching porn things like that all these things attract them right this was one of these things how I have learned about these things I learned also how to protect myself during making love let's say to not invite anything of this nature now let me tell you about other examples how I found out about these things. So another thing I wanted to talk about here is that, you know, I've done seven years of plant medicine ceremonies and it was really a massively profound set of experiences for myself where I would tune into my higher self. This is like the super ego part of ourselves and I could do whatever I wanted. Basically, I could ask questions about anything I wanted, I would get instant answers. Sometimes it wasn't like so obvious, wasn't like uh, clear, but overall I was doing this type of stuff for seven years. And uh, I could look into my past lives, for example, check myself in different bodies, because that's essentially, you know, think about higher self as a tree and you are just a branch of the tree now, right? But you can jump into a different branch for a moment or become the whole tree for a moment, right? So these types of things. And I would get a lot of guidance about many things on planet Earth, reality, nature of reality, things like that. And many things also about 
the control system on this planet, let's say. And one time during one of these sessions, and these things were very specific, like sometimes really showing me examples, explaining things in detail. These are all typically like for, in forms of visions and things like that. Sometimes like getting like specific names, things like that. During one of these sessions, I was being actually explained something about sex and I would be shown exactly what we are talking about here. So couple making love that is in love and I would be explained that this is okay, they are protected because they generate love, they love each other, blah, 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 right? And then I would be shown a second example where there would be casual sex and, uh, you know, the, the example that was shown was choking, <laughs> which seems to be a common uh, thing these days. Um, you know, I hear quite a lot that girls like these types of things. There are a lot of these um, things like Fifty Shades of Grey that promote BDSM and things like that. So I was shown this as a second example and explained that because there is a different force behind um, having sex here, right? Which is to force, right? First one is love, the other one is use force, right? For that. And that was being explained that this is exactly manipulation, right? So this type of things like Fifty Shades of Grey, like this whole pushing on casual sex, only fans, all these things, this is all promoted by the negative, by the dark side, because they suck energy. If sexual energy can, can have a different form, it's like anything, right? Like fire. You can use fire to cook a meal and warm yourself up, or you can use it to burn the house or, you know, burn yourself. Everything can be used in both ways. So sexual energy is one of the most powerful energies in existence, orgasm, creates new life, right? This is one of the most powerful things. But it, it can be used in different types of for, for good or for bad. And basically, well, this was explained to me during one of my sessions that these types of things like BDSM are, with this specific example, are just a manipulation of the dark side. I'm not gonna be naming them to harvest sexual energy. So, these are some of the consequences, you know, if you look at the whole porn industry, OnlyFans, if you look at people who are behind these industries, right, they try to normalize these things. Movies like Fifty Shades of Grey, trying to make it cool, normal, to attract people to these types of things. This is what it is. I'm not gonna say you should do this or you should do that. All I'm saying here, keep in mind that next time you sleep with someone who you are not in love with, there might be consequences to these things. And it's more than just temporary fun and that's it. There is more to these things. So let me know what you think about it. If you have any comments, let me know. I'm not saying you gotta believe me, whatever. Think about these things as philosophies. Research them yourself more. And remember I do coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I help people with their spiritual development, personal development. Go to truefury.com forward slash coaching, send me a message and I do quick initial consultation free of charge. And check out truefury.com forward slash academy for the Exit the Matrix online course. So thanks for watching another episode of True Spirituality. Until next time.